Welcome all of us, uh, all the attendees and panelists in today's session. Uh, so let's have the data first. Divya, can you please help us with data of the people yes. joining us today? Yeah, sure. So we have the maximum number of registrations for today, 701 till now. That's 701 much. total registrations for Miss Maria and uh, from which <clears throat> almost 401 students are there. So we have obviously maximum number of students and 215 teaching professionals and around 100 people from industry covering uh, various countries today. So we have uh, people from China, sorry, France, USA, Russia, and uh, covering Pondicherry, Chennai, Mumbai, Delhi. So all around the world, Maria ma'am, everybody would be hearing you today. And uh, industrialists covering from Newell, Mentra, Max, Shahi Exports. So uh, I think that's all. Uh, Mishweta would be taking over now. Thank you, Divya. Uh, I think I'm, the attendees are huge. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, we are extremely happy to get you, Miss Maria Chuma, today with us. Uh, an internationally acclaimed fashion and lifestyle designer from France and a visiting faculty at Bogan Institute of Art and Design and now also a mentor for us. She has over 17 years of profound experience in the field of fashion, design, drawing and illustration. So I'll just get you a brief about her. Maria came from the fine arts into design field 20 years ago. Having the degree in painting and illustration, she graduated from the Institute of Fashion in Paris. She worked over 12 years for big distribution and hot culture brands, as well as helping the small eco-design startup brands before um, coming to TV. Now, uh, she taught worldwide in Russia, France, US, India, Saudi Arabia, now she's finishing her thesis research in Pondicherry University, majoring in humanities, investigating the topic of the women's role in society, reflected in art and depictions and clothing, collaborating with Vogue Institute of Art and Design. I welcome you, Miss Maria. We're really happy to have you here today with us. And uh, she'll be talking about futuristic innovations in apparel design. Uh, for my attendees, please type in your questions in Q&A box, as always. Any technical clinch, please questions in the chat box. So over to you, Maria. Please take over. Thank you. Thank you for ev uh, everybody to, for joining Maria, us. And, uh, Maria, I'll just, I'll just intervene. I uh, completely forgot to uh, get you our panelist. We really ha happy Maria. to go ahead, go ahead today. Uh, we also have in panels uh, uh, Mr. Mohammad Rula and Mr. Chetan from Newell Textiles. Thank you so much for joining in. I think it's very kind of you people to spare time for us. So we are very happy. I think we'll be blessed to have inputs from your uh, end today. Thank you so much. Maria, can you please? Sure. Good morning. So good morning to everyone. And thank you uh, for joining us and uh, for this huge and great opportunity. I uh, thank you, uh, Vogue Institute of Art and Design, uh, having uh, organizing those webinars, which are very, very useful for for the students and for professionals. So uh, I'm understanding like I'm doing, uh, I will try to do in between. It means like the students, if they don't know something, they will Google. And the professionals, they, they will just revise. Uh, so, um, and I um, want to, to talk uh, about what everybody experiencing now. So everybody is involved and we are in the same boat let's say. Um, then, um, firstly, I will go through quickly uh, what was before, what we are facing now, and I will try to give the keys, not to open the door, I don't know which door will be opened, and what key we can use for the future. Because it's very important, we should be responsible, and especially uh, the um, students, which are the future, which are our future. So they need to understand what kind of the situation we are facing now. And as I think the elder generation, we are not hiding. So we need the uh, ideas, the fresh ideas, and we can top up with our experience. So we can make this world better. It sounds like very um, prominent phrase, but I think everybody 
co-experience uh, that pandemic uh, for the um, here in India, you know, well, because I don't know how people come outside. So, but anyway, everywhere it was shutting down and slowing down. Uh, and I think for good, on one hand, the fashion industry, the apparel uh, production. So uh, if we talk, I can't change the slide, guys. Okay, so um, just a second for the, the technical, yes. Uh, so uh, we started uh, ready to wear um, from very beginning uh, with a military uniform. Um, and uh, it started with the Napoleon army in 18, uh, 1812 when um, Napoleon invaded the half of Europe. So, and they needed to produce the uniform. So they done the grading uh, by the different sizes, approximately uh, the look which can fit to every soldier, every officer and very uh, high official. So, and then they started to produce in mass, let's say, for the army. Then uh, in 18, um, 1868, uh, the mass production started. So before it was like where we are going to the tailor and making the garments by the measures. Now we can go to the shop and uh, to pick up the ready-made garment. So we, uh, they needed to measure different types of people and come with a um, size chart. So it was done in uh, late 19th centuries and in the beginning of 20th centuries, it was 20 shops open uh, around Europe. So then this idea of ready-made garments uh, expanded. And so on the late, um, later uh, in 100 years, we came to the 25 billion for, for the last year. Uh, and this year we, uh, we expected that the 50 billion um, uh, billion income from this this industry, but uh, what happened? So well, everybody knows what uh, what happened next. Um, so the scene was like uh, that. For example, we came to the fast fashion, fast fashion, fast food, uh, everything just use and throw. So uh, this is uh, we can understand it might be possible when the um, uh, the population on the earth maybe can be uh, 1 billion, it can be possible, but with uh, 7 billion, it's just not possible. So, uh, and the fast fashion was introduced, uh, the word fast, uh, by the New York Times. And uh, we can see in the, uh, the leaders in 2019, everybody knows, uh, I'm like, please students, look, look at the panel and uh, see how many brands you use, how many brands you know, because of those brands, you are basically the, uh, the potential clients of those brands. So the industry growing on 21% from 2017 to 2020, in three years, 21%. I don't know, may, uh, maybe even the, um, uh, the petrol industry is not growing this much, this much and so fast. So, and um, then uh, uh, after the, uh, the, we can see the, um, the statistics for the 2020, before the lockdown. Uh, so, uh, yes, this is, uh, I wanted to put into, like, everybody knows that it's two to four collections per year. How many pieces also depends on the brand. And, um, what was happening that those big uh, distribution, it was swallowing the small production. It was swallowing the small brands who were not competitive in price. They were very competitive maybe in quality, but not in price. And so what we can see that Zara in 2017 uh, managing 20 clothing collections uh, a year. So it doesn't mean like the 20 new, it's just topping up the, um, every, every, let's say, 15 days. So every 15 days, they were coming some, uh, with uh, something new. So picking up from the runway, producing close by. So the ideas of that uh, fast fashion was like, 
uh, they were producing, for France, they were producing in Morocco. For India, they were producing in China. So the, uh, the closest country, which has a cheaper labor, they were pro producing in, a, in quantity. So um, that also what we can see when we produce for a huge amount of people, so we need to satisfy everyone. So we uh, basically, we will um, try to make something very common, which can be used by everyone. So what happened that uh, for sure, we were not uh, taking the, any risk in the designing. So we will reduce the creativity, we will reduce the color palette, and we just provide people what they seen on the, on the runway. So, uh, and we see that uh, Zara came with a huge number of uh, produced pieces, and it means like we, uh, they needed to sell and they were selling. So for sure they were producing, they were selling, and you were storing this in your wardrobes. So uh, let's say unnecessary things. Um, so this was, uh, if we see before the COVID, the, exp uh, the expectation for the market. So we see that India coming after China, USA, uh, China and USA, and so the dark color, uh, it was the forecast for 2022. So uh, we all suppose, again, to increase our consumption. So we see the consequences can be huge, like in the planet scale. Uh, then we see the brands in uh, 2017. So uh, I think it's a bit old scale, uh, um, but still we can sense uh, the leaders. So uh, in the text, in the text, it's uh, Zara, Bershka, Stradivarius, those who are in, uh, uh, in, uh, in India. Uh, you, uh, the students who doesn't know, you can Google. So it's available what brands are under, under this group. Then it was Nike, um, LVMH coming um, on the third position. And uh, when we see through uh, this chart, uh, we can get the surprise. So we can get the surprise because some of the brands, we were not expecting them to be so low. Uh, some brands, we are not expecting them to uh, have so high income. So what uh, then what we'll see, what we see, Repeat and thing. So I'm addressing to the students, maybe to professionals too. Look, guys, what's happening? It's the same, totally same repetitions. So from year to year, we came to the same silhouette, we came to the same color, we came to the same inspiration. So uh, even now, when while teaching, when the students are bringing me their the mood board, inspiration board, I don't know. I'm getting bored. Maybe, maybe you're also getting bored. So um, that's what we, uh, I, I just put something which is very common to uh, recognize yourself in the thing. So see the, for example, vacation inspiration board. So vacation colors on the right, you see like all the possible colors. Uh, then um, it's not pastel, rustic inspiration. So seriously, it's coming to the same. It's tuning around. For the, 20, uh, for the, let's say, 10, 15 years, uh, same things. Then uh, we came, for example, countryside or high feminine inspiration. So uh, here we just put the very common ones. Um, then, um, for example, the next slide, the, the neon colors. The neon colors since uh, 18, um, since, uh, sorry, 1980s. So neon colors, apparently the, uh, that fluorescent pigment was found for textile and we were chewing it as a highlight for sportwear for every collection. So that's what we've seen. Uh, we see that it needs maybe different approach, so more creative approach. Because the, thing, uh, the same thing for 20 years, I think it's just too much for the consumers and for the designers and for the production industry. So, uh, and then what happened uh, in spring 2020? So everybody uh, faced and knows what happened with the shutting down, with the um, quarantine in many countries. When we see through the chart and see like uh, how many countries were not applying the shutdown, 
for example, some people are telling that in uh, North Europe, in Finland, in uh, Norway, in uh, Sweden, it was not applicable, but it's not true. So I talked to people there. It was also even the um, Volvo production of the cars were affected, though, so the factories were shut down. So they were also effect, uh, affected by the COVID-19. So uh, then what happened that we all stayed home. So uh, it started in India and still continue. The first two phases were very hard. So, uh, and then now it depends on the state. In uh, Pondicherry, it's quite open, but uh, not the interstate connection. So we have all the shops open. So, uh, but I know that phase one, phase two was very hard for some states. And uh, then, for example, in Goa and that coast, uh, it was even very difficult to get the food. So that uh, everybody faced that just, if you have people who are not from India, so they, it will be uh, just, uh, just a reminder like what, what we are having now. So the on, online shopping pl uh, platform were shut down. So only for the last phase we can, uh, we can order and they're trying to pick up, but not for, in all the states. Uh, so uh, then, uh, what we were wearing. So this part uh, is quite important if we ask ourselves. So for two months we stay home. So uh, soon it will be uh, even uh, even more. So uh, what we were wearing. We were wearing something comfortable, right? You can maybe you can like take out the cloth and the shoes what you used during the lockdown. And you will see it will be a couple things. So it means like you were wearing the most comfortable thing during the two months and it was enough, right? And even you can give the hand wash because you don't need to run the machine for, for one t-shirt and the jogging pants, right? And what you were wearing, I think that's something very uh, agronomic, so they're human friendly, let's say a very nice fabric, uh, the fabric which is uh, natural and uh, you didn't need any extra clothing from your wardrobe. So about, uh, from the, uh, we were shifting more about the skincare. So for women, we might maybe uh, applying uh, the masks, not uh, the makeup because we, we don't need it. So attention shifted to our well-being, to our home and families, and how can we entertain ourselves? It's uh, different from the different experienced people, but it books, it, it's uh, the films, what we wanted to see. So we were self-updating, I, I guess so. And uh, for our side, we needed the gloves and masks, um, which are, the masks are compulsory in, um, in the state of Tamil Nadu and Pondicherry, I don't know the other states, I guess also, it's compulsory. And um, so what, what was happening, I think everybody faced it and everybody was asking the questions, what everything we need in our wardrobes and the shoes, the garments, etc. Is it really needed? Do we really need this for existence? And I'm sure I'm not alone in this. So uh, maybe uh, I don't know how many people, maybe uh, all, of, all of you guys uh, faced it. And I don't know how many people ask the questions, but I think it's very normal, very human to ask those questions. How many things we do need in our life? So um, uh, then I uh, just put this is uh, from fiber to fashion, what will be in high demand and what would be in high demand after the lockdown. So this showing us well that uh, we needed schedule uh, for where what we can use at home. And then uh, the formal and the party where, we, I don't know if we can organize a Zoom party, if we can use it, but uh, it's not compulsory for, for now. So this uh, is a recovery category, but I think what we use. So uh, the very interesting thing, sociologically, I don't know, maybe uh, the, uh, we have the listeners who are from sociology department. 
So it's very interesting thing what has happened. So everybody knows the muscle parameter of needs. Uh, students, if you are here, you just Google, you'll find out. It's uh, the basic knowledge because it's applicable for the, 100% uh, applicable for the fashion industry. So uh, we needed the sociological needs. So water, food, shelter. So unfortunately, many, many people in India, as you know, couldn't afford it during the lockdown. Uh, and then uh, clothing just to cover us, ourselves. And then what happened that we went to the higher thing, we went to the self-actualization. So uh, we took probably the online courses, we watched the uh, informative videos, we started different languages, we had our office online and uh, those things. So it means like we skipped all the pyramids of needs, uh, muscle pyramids of needs, uh, which is very much uh, applicable for the capitalistic society. So uh, then we were building the pyramids for the last couple centuries, but you found that uh, this is, uh, we need something different and what will might work better, it's the circular model. So when we talk about circular, uh, circular fashion, when we talk about the, uh, recycling, etc., so it come to the circle. And I uh, see, I think that maybe 90% of uh, people who are connected, we are from India, everybody knows the uh, um, Advaita Vedantan concept of koshas which is, I think, that uh, genuine and natural and etc. cetera, uh, seeing that um, some of the things uh, found in Hinduism, seeing that Hinduism is the uh, style of life, not a religion, uh, are very useful and very applicable to the lifestyle now. So uh, we know that concept and on the body, on the Anamaya Kosha, we can put extra kosha so but for what firstly we will come to the prehistory of fashion to cover from heat to cover from cold but then it unfortunately in uh, let's say 50 percent 60 percent it become the vanity so it's unnecessary luxury and unnecessary quantity so we are talking about quantity because we just too many on the earth so, uh, and that's why uh, we, before buying, before getting something, we need to uh, really think about the necessity. Uh, so, uh, sorry, I have the refuge that have family home. Uh, so the sales during the COVID-19, you can see from the chart, for sure, we needed the baby wear uh, or the baby products, soaps and etc. for the for the home uh, medical for shoot. Uh, I don't know if everybody is facing some some disturbance at home while doing. Uh, this is different from from the office work. Uh, so um, then um, we see that the fashion and the jewelry and the accessories, they are in the end. Because staying at home, just going shopping for the food, they seriously don't need. People who are living on, uh, uh, on the north, they have more seasons. So they have more necessity of getting uh, the just extra cloth, the warm cloth. On the south, I think uh, in South India, we just uh, don't need the, the boots, don't, we don't need the warm jacket, so uh, we even need less. Um, so the shift, I think that everybody uh, from um, any industry, from especially uh, the fashion industry and fashion and apparel, we're thinking, would it be the same after? Would it be different? Or how we can uh, we come out from, from the situation? So analyzing this, from my experience, I uh, listed 18 points. I will be happy if you guys can share your ideas 
and maybe your uh, your experience uh, for the future, how we can make the things better, how we can make the things worth, uh, and how we can change it. So um, I think that first change will be in the fiber. So uh, the fiber it means very human friendly, very environment fair friendly. So the fiber, which is new, which is good for the skin, uh, what you can comfortably use, which is maybe requires less washings. So, and uh, then the fiber, which is will come uh, into the fabric, what kind of fabric, uh, what kind of cut. When we talk about, uh, I will mention it a little bit later, that 100% um, uh, um, zero waste, so 100% usage uh, of the fabric. It doesn't mean that it will be some Baltic clothing. Uh, when we uh, talk about zero waste, that we will place, who's in from fashion industry, students should know, it's just about the placing. So maybe we can place, for example, when we cut, we buy skirts, in between we can place the kids' tops when we put it on the mattresses for cutting. So it means like we will save the maximum of fabric and we will have the tiny, tiny bits between the, uh, between the cuts or what can go for the, for the waste or can be recyc recycled into fiber again. So color, uh, color, we won't use the nocive for environments, nocive for people, nocive things for coloring. So the nocive pigments will go for some, like we seriously, we don't need to bleach so much bleaching of the t-shirt. We maybe not need the bio wash. So uh, because while, while washing, we will come to the soft touch of the fabric. So uh, how much water we will use for, uh, I don't talk about gene. This is just horrible thing. How many uh, liters of water you can Google, you'll find for the different effects on the gene. So on the denim fabric, how much water we will use. This is just insane. So we'll come to our uh, eco-friendly ideas for sustainability means durably, uh, durable. It's not, doesn't mean recycling, the circular pattern, but it means durable. Uh, so the new marketing pro, uh, concepts, marketing pro, uh, concept uh, here, it might be the idea that from the uh, producer, from the designer to uh, the customer, so made by measure, basically. Uh, slow fashion versus the fast fashion. So uh, while buying the thing, we will measure, is it worth it? Do we need it? And maybe it won't be like uh, that spontaneous buying because it's cheap or I don't know, because we had that idea in the morning. So before buying, you will check your wardrobe. I don't know how many people notice that we have, I don't know, three, four, five black pants, similar but we might have need only one. So a responsible and attentive customer. It means like, I want to know where it was done, who done it, uh, because I don't want the child labor. I don't want the abusive labor thing. So I want to know where it was produced, from what fabric it was produced. And uh, so I need to maybe see it from the label. And for sure, I want to be sure that if it's 50% cotton, 50% uh, um, polyester, I want this fabric. So, uh, because in some, some, some brands, uh, I'm sure that it's not the care label, is not the right, the right thing what is in the, uh, in the fabric. So the minimal packaging. So see, for example, you receive the Amazon pack. So how many plastic is there? And the pla this plastic is very good plastic, to be frank, it's like plastic for ages. I'm using this, uh, this plastic bags for, for the home needs. So for one year, it's still there. Local production, local production, we talk about the food markets, about uh, consuming local in the food sense, but it's 100% applicable on the fashion and uh, we can make this change. We can make this change so we can um, sponsorize, we can buy from the local producing, from the local tailors, from the local shops, 
which are which are coming out now more more and more so shift from ready made to made to measure because uh, if we talk about the uh, design uh, if the garment fits you perfectly it's let's say haute couture and uh, definition of the haute couture i don't know if uh, students here they, they can google and find haute couture it's a uh, Sh the, the um, pieces should be finished by hand. So it should be the hand touch in the haute couture. So meaning that you are going to the local tailor, if he's going the good job, it's haute couture. So the students are making the garments for the um, final fashion show or during the, uh, their study, it's haute couture because it's made by hand. So it's not the seven minutes production of the uh, Levi's jean. So affordable eco luxury. Eco luxury, it doesn't mean uh, that it's Chanel, Dior, and etc. It means it can, uh, it can be done in your street, but with the products what you know, the, the fresh products, uh, the fresh uh, things. Then uh, the same, the eco luxury that can be the uh, natural fa uh, fabric from just your state and maybe uh, done by brothers. In, in on your street so it become the eco luxury and we should proud wearing this garment we should be proud because i um i mean when i get something uh from pondicherry i'm proud that uh, it's from pondicherry it's not the zara from china so unfortunately what i see from the youngsters they they do they are attracted by the brands they are attracted by the I don't know the others uh, post on uh, Instagram. So be proud who you are. Be proud what you are wearing. Be proud of what you are getting from from your area. So the new technology. So the new technology, uh, it's under developing, but I think uh, under developing now. So I think it will be the future for the uh, for the rest. So uh, we have some innovations which we are using since, sorry, sorry, I, I need to remove the cat because she brought all the kittens. You go out. So then um, everybody is annoying the fleece, uh, fleece textile. For how many years we are using it and it's, just perfect. It's very easy to wash. It's uh, very warm and very easy to handle. And for sure, it's very durable. I have something since I am 14. So it's still, still wearable. So cradle to cradle design. It's, um, I won't stop here now because uh, I think we are more than a half already in timing. Uh, I will put that concept for um, for the for the next uh, webinar. So uh, basically, from something come to something, and cradle to grave, and from something to for the disappearance. So uh, the um, favorite artisan uh, artisanal production that what uh, I was talking about, and uh, for one size fit all so this is a tendency uh it's also it also doesn't need that something bulky and uh, that uh, it can be for the any body structure so it should be the new fiber the new fabric which may be stretchable so much without any problem for the fiber and for the client so that uh, we can produce one size so and going through the uh, trend like after uh, covid 19 trend what will be fashionable it's athletic wellness luxury so this is an interesting word to remember uh athleisure so because we stayed at home we took care of ourselves we uh might done yoga or any exercises we needed the, um, the sportwear let's see and uh that part of luxury touch so part of some fancy thing can be added to this so comfort variety and innovative design with a hand touch uh, so this um i put uh the research which was already done uh so the 
Indian production might shrink uh, on 35%. So the customer trends, it's health, hygienic and safety, uh, online presence. The problem of online, pre uh, online buying for the garments and apparel, this is, I think this is a problem because firstly, we need to touch it. We want to try it. The thing, when it's delivered, okay, we are all the um, online uh, shopping experience is not the same, but if it doesn't fit or you don't, or like it's not the quality what you're expecting, sometimes even on the description on the product, there is no, it's not mentioned if it has lining and etc. So we need to return. So when uh, the, um, the passage of the courier, uh, we need to be at home to handle it. So this, this is uh, that all procedure sometimes take like one day to receive the, they are calling you're not at home, etc. Then you try that you just waste of time also to guide the courier and then to pick it up. So it's, it's long, let's say. So for sure the online experience will be more developed, but it's already developed. So uh, that, um, that, that's what, what uh, we will have uh, as a consumer trend. And then for sure it will be more on measure, I think. So uh, the e-commerce for sure will continue and uh, the, the rapid growth we, we saw already. So that um, the direct to the consumer brand, fast fashion we discussed. So one, uh, it will be from fast fashion to the slow fashion. So relocation factors from China. Uh, this, I don't think that uh, India affected by this. We can uh, maybe uh, ask the specialist because of the import tax. I don't think that India produced a lot and India imported from China, except of uh, high tech fabrics. Um, so uh, anti-microbial uh, microbial uh, finishing. So this after what we faced for sure, it will be the necessity. Uh, and then we'll come to the circular production. Uh, so what about the fiber? So we will see for the uh, new fibers, we will invest into the fiber more than into the cut, more than into designing the piece. Uh, so this is, this is, to my opinion and to opinion of uh, many people who are doing the trend forecast, this is the future. So now it's all fibers they are under development, um, like we are testing, it's just the test of different natural fibers, what we can applicable. So we use the biofiber. So uh, I, I don't need to, I think, to mention uh, all the fibers we use because uh, students, professionals, so we have all the that, uh, textile classes. So, but hemp, flax, pineapple, banana, and sugar cane, even the lotus fiber, uh, it's uh, something new. So how we will commercialize uh, the fiber, what I really like as a new thing, it's a bamboo because it's very soft and uh, the, it's, it's different. So if you have the experience, just ask uh, the fabric shop and like uh, touch the bamboo fiber. The problem of the bamboo fiber, uh, I don't know how it's now the 10 years back, it was, very, it was very expensive. It was more than double price of the cotton and for sure, uh, maybe that uh, it's uh, more expensive in production. So even the coffee ground fiber was tried uh, all the ba uh, pineapple, banana, as, uh, as I mentioned. So we tried all the vegetables and uh, all the fruits for, <laughs> for making that into the fiber and into the fashion. So um, we want that fiber, uh, even the animal fiber, if you have the wool uh, from different animals, we want to know that how the animals were treated. I think everybody wants to know how, when even buying the meat who are not vegetarian. So uh, for example, the idea of Ahimsa silk, who, uh, who haven't heard about it, blue, uh, plus uh, please see and go through from it. So uh, then uh, we have that uh, this uh, smart fiber, the new idea that it will be directly done as a felting basically. Uh, for the uh, cutting piece. Uh, then medical responsibility, the virus resistant materials. 
So I think uh, everybody concerned about it, not only for medical workers, right? And uh, then the safety responsibility. So these kind of small points, what I wanted to request from, uh, from the fiber. So uh, fiber point of view. So the textile from this kind of fiber, we want the biodegradable, right? Even the biopolyester was introduced uh, and hope it will go through the, on the mass production. So we will have it in, um, uh, at home. Uh, non textile, so microfibers, then the membrane, what we use now, the different kinds of form and everybody know the uh, Gore-Tex. So, um, and then uh, the uh, NASA lab, you just uh, go through and see what kind of the, uh, fibers and textiles are coming to fashion from different industries. So it can come for, from furnishing, it can come uh, from different, different, uh, I don't know, from automobile production. So it comes into fashion. So how we can, we can use it for the apparel design. So now I want to ask a little help about the last, last two innovations of, uh, if we can um, also mention with the specialists uh, about the last innovations in, in, the, in the textile industry, in the fibers, and that uh, uh, what, what we will expect in 10 years to wear and to be on the market. Shreddy, if we can pass uh, to Mr. Mohammed. Yes, Mr. Nurula, if you can just enlighten us. Uh, hi. So good to hear a lot of things from the Maria. Uh, I just would like to uh, highlight a few things over here. So Maria has highlighted one of the, uh, in one of the slides, uh, she's, she mentioned uh, biodegradable. Why the biodegradable is necessary for this world? What is, from where it is coming from? That's very important to understand because the future is sustainability, and biodegradability. Biodegradable means like the any items which can biodegrade in the landfills. So why do we think on that? Right now we have the sustainability aspect. The number one is recycle polyester, recycle nylon. We have that. Only if you keep on doing the recycle, that means we can reuse and recycle, but still is going to be in the landfill. After the recycle, if you throw into the landfill, it will not going to biodegrade and it will going to stay as it is. Once it stays as it is, we are not able to do anything going forward, meaning we cannot do agriculture and the whole environment will get spoiled. Therefore, the new technology which has been introduced and still like a lot of research is going on on biodegradability. See, if you say biodegradable, biodegradable uh, uh, for polyester, if you make it biodegradable, which is going to be more sustainable. But if you say cotton, cotton is a biodegradable already. And the viscose is biodegradable. So, but viscose and cotton will not going to harm us, but the polyester and nylon is going to harm us. Therefore, the biodegradability come into the pictures. And the next, the earlier slide, can you show me the Maria, the earlier slide? I just want to highlight a few things here. Uh, previous uh, one. Ah, uh, okay, this one only. Okay, this one. And also the nano textiles. Uh, nano textiles, again, nano means 10 to the power of minus nine, which we all know, nano. Eh? 10 to the power of minus means, means very, very minor. But the nano textile, I don't heard it. Microfibers, yes, micro means 10 to the power of three, which is like polyester is a microfilament fibers. So polyester itself has a many, many things we can do it actually. Right now, there are hundreds and varieties of polysters available in the marketplace. I can give you one of the important thing here. See the polyester which is produced in Japan, the polyester produced in Taiwan, which cannot be produced in China and India. Though the India is a big, uh, uh, we have the big setup of this manufacturing of polyester, but we cannot produce the same thing because polyester right now is predominantly, predominantly almost like 60% of the, all the clothes has been used by polyester. If today, if you are not going to make the polyester as a biodegradable, we're going to face a big challenge in the whole world. Therefore, the biodegradable is very important for the polyester. And then here, this Gotex and the poems and memorands. Gotex, Gotex is a company name actually. 
Exogotex is a company name which has been developed a lot of uh, uh, water resistance, water repellency finishes through the chemical finishes. And fiber coming from another industry, polyurethane, you're, you're just giving the examples of all things. There are like a lot of new fibers are coming in, which is a more uh, functional fibers. Functional fibers, uh, there are nylon has a lot of functional fibers. Graphene has a functional fibers. A lot of fibers are available in the marketplace, which is dominating in the marketplace right now. Go to the next slides. With this one, you can, Maria, you can continue. I can interrupt if they have any questions. And I mainly wanted to ask you, uh, where are the, in India, the most prominent labs uh, situated and who is developing the new fibers and uh, making the tests on the new fibers? See, uh, generally, like right now, the new fibers uh, is focused by uh, athleisure companies. Athleisure companies, athleisure workwear people, meaning Nike, Adidas, Lululemon, uh, even the Columbia nice. Sports and also under Rama, these are the brands which is like almost uh, dominating and developing in new fibers. So they are focusing more mostly in the Japan and Taiwan and the US. And also a lot of technologies are coming from the Europe. A lot of technologies, especially on the chemical side, uh, technologies are coming from the Europe and the fiber side uh, is coming from the Taiwan and Japan. But India is, doesn't have that much uh, innovation on the uh, fiber front. But we, we have so nice natural fibers, so maybe we need to uh, be more focused on what we have. See, we all talk about the natural fiber we have. If you see this whole the graphic in the whole world, if you take this 100% of fibers, out of that only 30% is a natural fiber. Mm -hmm. Rest of the fiber are all like the synthetic and man-made fibers. Mm -hmm. So synthetic fibers are, is going in a very aggressive way. But reason number one is it's a lighter, because even if you say this polyester uh, uh, nylon is very light because the specific gravity of this polyester is 1.24. If you compare to the cotton is 1.54 because I don't want to wear the cotton and go in the summer if the heavy thick cotton because it's going to absorb the moisture and going to retain it on the body. Whereas if you use this something like um, blended fabrics with the cotton and then can, that can absorb less moisture and give them more comfort. Comfort is a major important thing for the wearers and the consumers in the fashion industry. Because sometimes uh, I think we are all experienced who are touch uh, fashion industry when for example we go to uh, Decathlon every time we, we touch and find something new old in production of what you don't know yet. <laughs> so mm. this, this is interesting that for the sportwear we have the new fibers. That is very good. Uh, see, touch is nothing but the hand feel of the fabric, okay? There are two things here I'm, I want to explain here in the details. The hand feel is the key for the, any products, touch. But the better touch you will get in the synthetic than the cotton. Cotton will have only cotton hand feels. Maximum you will get it. Cotton, Try a lot of people trying cotton to get like a, like a polyester hand feel. Even with through this ammonia treatment, it gives a nice hand feel, but it has the polystyrene hand feels. But the synthetic fiber can be molded into the any type of uh, hand feels. But cotton and natural fiber, it is difficult to mold the hand feels. Because from my point of view, like living in Pondicherry with this in extreme heat now, I personally really appreciate this coarse fabric. So then I don't know if it's very competitive to cotton, but I think like. From my uh, user's point of view, uh, viscose is the best for the, for the hot climate. Yes, see, uh, if you talk about this uh, uh, comfortability, there are three things will come into the picture. Number one is the feel of the fabric, which touches to the body. And the second thing is the functionality of the fabric, which is very important. Functionality of the fabric is, as, as, as I said, like cotton uh, fabric, it has the moisture regain of 6%, whereas the, uh, your uh, viscose has 11%. Like if the 11%, which goes to give you the cool feeling. Right. Again, again, if you say like this, polyester has a 0% moisture regain, but it has a wicking properties. It will go to wick and it going to evaporate and make you feel comfortable, the number one. Second thing is, if you take about the nylon, nylon has a 4% moisture again. 
which is like again gives a cool feeling. You can see that many many brands has been giving advertisements like a cool touch, cool hang. It is not coming with any chemical finishes. It is by nature. So again, uh, the people who wants to wear in which season, which is important, based on that, everything has to be decided. Sure. So thank you so much, sir, for your very informative. Uh, oh, thank you very much. I so, uh, hope we can make the full webinar about this topic because I think oh. like everybody is very excited about that, especially uh, from. Uh, our point of view of designers uh, that textile and fiber is a future our touch will be the tiny one yeah so, the thing is the in the whole fashion industry because i'm blunt to the fashion industry the most important thing is the color right color is most important thing for fashion designers to the consumers and then you have touch base upon this one of the topic you touch base with the neon colors mm -hmm. i'll just give you uh, neon colors, the Nike, Adidas are the company who have developed uh, almost 1,000 neon colors. They're still getting into the more neon colors. Yeah, but the, so neon color, the, yeah, the neon color is, <laughs> especially the neon colors are used in the activewear and athleisure work wear, which is very important for them. Uh, but the neon color has a, a biggest uh, challenges in terms of the color fastness properties. So therefore, everybody is very afraid to do these neon colors, uh, but still they want to pursue that one. And they will go and put one uh, disclaimer always on the neon colors. Don't wash like this, don't wash like this. Hand wash. Yeah. For some of the things, I think that it's a necessity. Why we use on the sportwear? Because if we go jogging, jogging at night or in the evening, it's good there are that uh, reflection of the neon touch, so it we are visible from far. So, but some mm -hmm. are just making that uh, aesthetic part. So neon color doesn't reflect. There is a reflective colors are there. Yes, reflective. The reflective colors has been developed by many people, and that's used to mostly for the workwear people and the second thing is cycling people who want to cycle cycle bicycling people they will going to use it uh, reflective yes, things yes, yes. and also reflective chemicals reflective prints are available in the marketplace yes, yes. that's been used in athletes and activists yes, yes. but if we are talking about the active uh, leisure luxury so the way we'll pick it up definitely from uh, from this uh, from See, a, after this COVID-19, luxury became, um, luxury is a no meaning right now. <laughs> it's comfort is a luxury today, I can say. Comfort is a luxury. Yes. So, uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. So, what if you have uh, any questions, you can ask me, like, it's, I'm, I'm open to explain anything here. Uh, the other thing which I want to highlight is uh, your Maria, your slides shows uh, pineapple, apple, whatever, it is, the banana fibers. Even why can't we use our hair, human hairs, to make the fabric? That's a big question mark, right? Human hairs are going as a waste. But the thing is, we have to think how are we going to scale up to the commercial level? So, right now, right now, the fiber, whatever available fiber itself, we are not able to make it commercialized and not able to make stabilize with all the properties, why we need to invent the other things. But having said this, we have to keep on doing the invent of some things, if it's a good characteristics or something properties, which is going to be helpful for the human beings or the consumers. Right. And there should be any things to the product, which is very important. Anything we and talk, we need to be value add to some, some, something. And Sarah, I have a question uh, from your uh, experience. How long it takes from the lab to the customer for the, uh, for the new fabric, for the new textile? It's just like an example, like, uh, like COVID-19, vaccine has been getting developed, correct? Yes, that, that's so right. That's the right. Vaccine <laughs> in the whole world, they're doing a lot of experience, correct? That is how we need to do it because, see, to develop anything in the textile, textile is a very huge industry, but it's not one industry. It has a lot of auxiliary industries attached to that one. We have to build the auxiliary industries, then we have to focus on the main industries. If you don't build the auxiliary industry, if you just focus on the main industry, we're going to collapse it. 
as of now in india we can do the innovations but we don't have the auxiliaries auxiliary means supporting support means support from the chemical industry support from many many industries machinery industries and also the final industry which is the government support should be there to do something good things i hope it will be changed uh, taking time as always in india but it will be changed for the for the support from all industries and the government support for sure definitely uh, india has a lot of scope to develop it because 1.2 billion dollar uh, populations i saw in your slide uh, very second slide or third slide i remember the your numbers the china you said like a 400 and uh, 358 billion dollar business and then compared to india it's a 61 billion dollar in that uh, sorry 32 billion dollar business in that 32 billion dollar it is not only textile it is not only apparel it's been divided into two textile is a, is about 15 billion dollar 17 billion dollar is a apparel business that's how the india is done so india is a 1.2 billion dollar 1.2 billion populations they did the business of combined textile and apparels is 32 billion dollar you in your slide it indicates that vietnam has 34 38 billion dollar business which is the population of only 97 million people yeah, so where are we standing right now where are we standing in your chart i saw that one the vietnam has 97 billion people million people but they do business of 38 billion dollar whereas we are like 1.2 billion people we are doing 32 billion dollar business what are we doing it how are we going to do it the lot of students are there they have to come out with something innovative yeah, ideas, yeah. innovative practices innovative something change is called innovations we need to focus more focus and more thing and we have to concentrate on the things what we do then only we can develop it we also uh, i think they should have the desire the huge desire to change the things to think more and uh, that they are not working for the grades in the colleges they need to be patient with what they are doing and uh, they would they the like, students if you hear me so please be involved be like uh, i don't know uh, be in the desire to change the things for for the future for the better so we are we are see we are the old generation we are talking to you now so we have that experience and we want you to to continue we want you to make it better there is no old generation new generation only this new coming is coming because even if you old we should think for new for tomorrow yeah. our mind should be young we should be old i'm getting old but our mind should be young that's how we need to able to do it we are trying we are trying to would, we would request a lot of uh, participant has been joined from the colleges uh we have to focus more on uh more on the giving the training to the students and we have to focus on each and every things nothing is important nothing nothing is great nothing is not important everything is important in this industry learning textile learning fiber learning weaving learning fashion fashion is combined combination of everything a fashion designers can dictate to the uh, textile industry and say i need to develop these these colors i need to develop this this hand feels that is how this uh, textile people will work towards the designers designers has to think beyond their out of the box they have to think always in terms of the color in terms of the uh, 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 fashion uh, fashion is nothing but like creating something uh, which you are aware mostly but the thing is now in the industry fashion comes with the fabrics if fabric is good you can do any fashion so i, I think the design in part of the because we all have the second webinar so that uh, design in part of innovation uh, i will definitely uh, take on the um on the next session because uh, as i mentioned the color also while teaching and tell to students when they come to the rack uh, the first thing is structure is a color color and fabric then you only pick up and see what it is so uh, and then it's a huge combination of everything uh, yes. what's called fashion yes i told you that right all the student who is participated in this students are our college uh, uh, faculties please focus on everything which is very important for the textile and apparel industry 
this is nothing like uh, only this is important that is important nothing like that once they come to the industry they will going to start from the fabric everything comes from the fabric designing so please pay attention to the fabric pay attention to this uh, many many details of the fabrications which is very important for the fashion designers we are not linking the uh, textiles and apparels to the fashion designers we are just disintegrating we are dividing which is not right once they come to the industry the designer has to decide what things they have to bring it for the next season what is the concept you need to drive other than the colors other than the your, uh, your sketches this everything boils down to the fabrics and then this one of this like fabric fashion and then it comes to the retailing then it comes to this everything we need to focus everything and please please pay attention to the students and student also need to pay attention to to learn maximum whatever possible uh, in the schools and also please visit the industries not one but time many times understand. this is right right so. because uh, so like in france it's uh, like to be by the students no, uh, the not that it is not like that. textile even though textile can be we can talk the textile in a very fashionable way exactly and very, like, very creative it's creative have to have to teach the subject textile is a very interesting subject how are we going to teach if you teach the right way the people will going to definitely they want to enjoy it if you teach uh, in a different ways like we just put one screen or something talk textile fiber has divided into man made and natural these things nobody will get interested so i think we need to focus and we need to teach textile like a living organism living things then we can able to make people to understand so please uh, the teachers who are here okay we take, take the questions from the audience if any questions are there Sure, sure. Now we, we need to, I don't know if you'll have the uh, time for the questions well, because I have like uh, something to add to all of the told things. So it, I it, can it, one or two uh, questions, try to find sure. it. So um, for yes, the, uh, yeah, go ahead. Now you have to finish the slides. Yeah, yeah, yeah we will do all. Uh, I will just take some questions. Yeah. Well, uh, give me ten minutes. Maybe I will try to prepare the questions. Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 And finish. Finish. Complete. Anyway, we, I think we are. We've seen the situation and we've seen the challenges. So, from a perspective of design point of view, uh, I think that what what is the future? It's a high tech things. So plus the handmade touch, because we are all humans. We want something like when we are going for the food, we want our mom's food, right? Not only the, uh, the, the hotel food. So it will be uh, the same. We want this high performance in the textile and um, uh, with something very handicraft. So uh, the, um, about the new uh, textiles and innovations. I remember that uh, the, um, once talking to my friends, they told me, you're a fashion designer. We want uh, the t-shirt, what we can wear in summer and in winter. There is a fiber which, are, which is uh, reacting to the temperature outside and our temperature. So you buy one sort of t-shirt, uh, when it's cold, like minus, uh, minus 10, minus 15, it's like uh, gives the fur or so, some, some kind of the fiber magic. And then when it's hot, it becomes thin. So this was uh, also like the question, would it be possible in the future? Yes, it is possible. Already available technology, which is called the face chain material. The face chain material was been developed by the NASA technology which is about like 22 years back, they're using it for the military purpose. But right now this technology is being developed and evolved in the world 
and people can use it, which can give this hot to cool, cool to hot, which call this phase change material. See, whenever the, uh, we feel like cold, that means the body temperature is 28 degrees centigrade. When we feel hot, our body temperature is above 32 degrees centigrade. That's how we feel this cold and hot. If we regulate this temperature, we can be comfortable, which is called the air conditions. So there's a technologies available already in the world. And also to keep you warm, there is a latest technology which has been used by uh, many brands. Also, you have mentioned in your one of the slide, uh, uh, which is Columbia Sportswear is using this uh, Omini, correct? Omini is what? Omini is nothing but a chemical things which is going to keep retain the heat inside the body. And the same technology which is called this graphene, they use the graphene material inside to retain the heat. But what they have done is they have given a little bit of glaze to that and that's why it is it is also clear and they have done a good job. And it would, really it's going to retain the heat. What it does is it's retaining the heat by minimizing the thickness of your material. Meaning like earlier to, the, to safeguard the cold, we need to wear very thick ones, the jackets. Right now we are using very thin jackets because we have the technology inside. So uh, in Europe, what is uh, very like in demand, not very expensive, uh, it's uh, that uh, thermal underwear. So it's uh, like really underwear, but having this property that it's very warm, uh, basically it's spun from the, um, from the wool. And uh, I think it's a natural fiber mixed uh, with a uh, high tech, uh, innovations uh, and then it's it's really uh, keeping warm so we can put the underwear then the light jacket and go outside with a zero temperature uh, and it's not uh, like it's very uh, wallet friendly so it's a little bit more expensive than the normal underwear but uh, this is uh, the also might be the future so and then I found that there is a cooling Cooling fabrics, but so it's uh, not as you explained that uh, the same fabric reaction to the to the temperature. It's two two separated things. So one is cooling, another is uh, keeping your your temperature. So and then uh, we can have the varieties of uh, reflecting uh, on the lighting, reflecting. Uh, it's more like uh, the color wise, changing the color. It's more like the fancy thing. Uh, it's, uh, I think there is not too much functionality. So, uh, uh, and it can be also uh, the future for the, then, then it's a question of cost, cost of production, cost of retail. So uh, would it be affordable for, uh, for the price what we used to, uh, used to pay? Uh, what, what is happening now also, if we shift to that uh, sustainability and uh, the more, uh, eco-friendly things, uh, we need also to educate our consumer because people are so used to pay uh, 100 rupees or $2 for the, uh, for the t-shirt, uh, but would they be ready to pay 20, 20 or 15, 20 dollars knowing that the, I think that they're also the idea of giving the warranty, but then we don't know how people are washing. Uh, but th th this can be good because we have the warranty for any product we buy normally, but why not to give it to, for the governments? Because uh, we all know well how uh, big brands like uh, Personal no h and uh, Labs, they are working on the weekend fiber to, you know, make the machine work. So uh, the guarantee of five, five washing guarantee for the, for the t-shirt. So uh, they, this, um, this should be changed also in the consumer mind because now we need to buy less, we need to spend more for every garment which will last. So uh, this is the ethical side of that, uh, I think COVID-19 uh, lesson, what everybody learned. So uh, don't be so used that it's cheap, it's disposable, it's, it will be, you will pay more, but you should have the guarantee that it will last. So for sure, we have all like, especially the elder generation, for example, we take some, some jacket stitched maybe 30 years ago, we still can wear it. And something bought a couple of years back, it's, uh, it's falling apart. So uh, this, um, I think that uh, basically uh, from uh, main, uh, point of view, many, 
looking back as looking forward now. So this part of uh, maybe 20 last years we were wasting. The, we were main, wasting. the main thing what we need to carry on uh, on this session is sustainability is the key. Sustainability is an innovation. Sustainability means just not like a cotton fabric we are using it or recycled polyester we are using it. It's not only that. It has a many things. Sustainability has a bigger uh, bigger understanding. We need to understand sustainability carefully, but that is the future of whole apparel and textile industry. Okay, I think we are uh, done with this, uh, probably. So I, I just want to, you know, like uh, put the final touch. I think that everybody knows that uh, everybody experienced. So uh, we have some uh, the um, new devices integrated in the, in the, in the comments. So uh, firstly, as I mentioned, they're all size can fit all. So and some brands are working on this, the transformers. So that this is design part also, how uh, to, to transform the pants to the jacket. So this is designing part, uh, which is uh, quite interesting to work or even students, you can make the collections. So this is more geometry, geometry mathematics and experimental part. Uh, so this is the future. Then um, to perspective of the many heels and platforms in the shoes will disappear because it's not comfortable. It's not. It was considered as it's beautiful. So we can go uh, through the fashion brands. We see the high heel. I put the slide, the picture. You see what's what's going on with the feet until where the foot of the lady going the toes and where is the extra design part which added the unnecessary things so uh, as a corset what was worn in europe for 500 years uh made the uh, women suffering so changing the bone structure so women wearing the heels for job for um, functions it's not a very common part in India, maybe, uh, but in uh, Europe, uh, especially France, the high heel, 90, uh, that, uh, 9 centimeters compulsory for or going out, this is just ridiculous. So uh, we um, should respect our feet, we should respect our body. So this, uh, the trend be, uh, will be different. So maybe the shoes will be molded by the size it's more like orthopedic shoes so it should be very comfortable uh you should uh, you should have the feel if you are barefooted or wearing uh the shoes it should be the same too so the zero face uh waist fashion please go through so i put the links this is very much in trend so how we can reduce the waste uh, this uh, in Wikipedia, even you have the designers. I was surprised with an excellent article on Wikipedia. In Wikipedia, for students, this is uh, information I think uh, for researchers and students, they have the awesome uh, references. So, some of the uh, as they put citation needed, but when you go in for references in the end of the article, excellent. So, you have uh, that uh, free reference on the internet even from the research gates or from the uh, very uh, reliable sources. So uh, this is the thing, gender neutral. So basically when we go, for, uh, because I was teaching for, for a long time the uh, history of fashion. So when we take the history of fashion, the fabric was the same. So for menswear and women's wear, the colors were the same. If we take uh, that uh, Marie Antoinette fashion, for example, same fabric, used for men, same fabric used for women. So uh, this is uh, now also for the, uh, the production part. If we produce the same jacket, uh, the only everybody knows that for, for women's wear, we need the darts, for the men's they have a larger, so there are the yoke basically there. So, but maybe with a new textile, with a new technology, we'll come to even skip this uh, fitting, fitting part. So gender neutral fashion. Then a spandex, uh, spans and latex. So it's more uh, tendons, it's uh, let's say about the, uh, the ethical perception. Uh, now we are more in the body shape. So when we ta take the Instagram and see how many people are signed for uh, Kim Kardashian, 
it's just crazy thing. Uh, so this is a trend, let's say. Uh, and then uh, that uh, latex look as a second skin. So about the latex, you guys Google, you'll fi uh, find that it, the fabric which can be rubbed over because as I'm understanding, it's not breathing, it's still plastic, but it comes as a, as a second skin in the look. Uh, so this part I wanted to mention, this part is important. So gadgets, we integrate the gadget and accessory, we integrate the gadgets in the, in the garment. But then one thing, we don't ask the questions, uh, maybe, I don't know if you guys ask the questions, the impact to the health. Is it healthy to have your Bluetooth here? So the earrings for the Bluetooth uh, device. Your Google glasses, you need to uh, ask the ophthalmologist, is it good? Is it good to uh, have the uh, LED battery on you, near your body, system functioning inside, near your organs, is it good? I don't think so, seriously. I don't know, when I see, for example, the pregnant lady, a lady having her phone in the pocket near her tummy where is the baby, your, and that the signal is connected, I don't think it's healthy for her, for the baby, and etc. So this is the big question. I think this, now we are all concerned about the medical impact, so the impact to our health. So I think this should be very much uh, looked into with the physicians so not to introduce the chip all around our body so this is the point what is uh if we're going uh looking about the trend so again local versus the big paraben enterprises for the for the skincare for the cosmetics so who will win this is this is a game and who is the players it's us so uh, whom we will give our money? We'll give that, that make those guys richer, the uh, multinational and international brands, or we will go for, for the local. Uh, also the thing is, I think for the local, if you go, uh, the packaging should be work better. So uh, who doesn't know that Lush Fresh May um, British cosmetic brand, go see their policy, how you return the box and how they will refill your box. This is interesting. If you take, uh, I don't know, the shampoo even from Biotic, it can go in the landfill for at least maybe a couple hundred years. So, and then that the, they, 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 it should work to work. So uh, this is about the trend. Then the app turns shoppers into the fashion models. So it's uh, for the last fashion week, the totally online fashion week. This is interesting, you can download it. Uh, to be frank, I haven't tried it. So you can download uh, your picture in it, like certain uh, point of view. In a, uh, you click on the link, uh, they will explain you how to film yourself, how to upload yourself, and then you can try that. Uh, the things. And then uh, in the conclusion, so after COVID-19, which is still here, unfortunately, we will come about from I to we, we'll care about others, right? We will come to the community responsibility. So if uh, there are the lots of questions, uh, I think that Questions will be answered in many years what happening now because we don't know. So uh, if the, for example, the cover, if uh, the face uh, mask is asked, is it for you or is it for the others? Or is it for the both? So this is the thing then family values. So I think that all of us, we will think backwards that, that if our parents are alive, if our children are healthy and if we don't have something which hurt us, hurts us, we should be happy. So this is, <laughs> I think, the good family value. How you can, uh, you can test if you have everything in your life. So um, less impact. So you come to the beautiful landscape, uh, having your lunch there, for example, bringing your lunch with you, uh, going to the beach with your lunch, when it's not too hot as now. So please be sure when you're going back, you have nothing on the, uh, on the sand, you have nothing on the ground. 
So we need to uh, behave the same way. So less impact is a better. So uh, then uh, the one thing also, this is interesting part I want everybody to try. Uh, it's a French app, so you need to delete your, uh, I think, location. So it's not, uh, work, it doesn't work in India. It's not downloaded in India, strangely. So uh, you click on the, uh, it's already explained, uh, on the um, uh, label uh, on your clothing, and it gives you the different impact and percentage from 100. So how it's uh, eco-friendly, how is a human labor friendly, and et cetera. And also, I think that uh, what is good that everybody can contribute. So if you know, for example, one brand is not behaving properly uh, to the um, workers and et cetera, you, um, there is a, the app, for example, a trust, trust the Pilot. Uh, I think that many people are using it. So it's uh, every user is contributing. So I think uh, about the fashion, we should do the same. So we can maybe create the app, which helps us to contribute. Uh, to, like when we are contributing, we can like make the customer aware of what's happening. So from what uh, uh, the, from where this jacket coming, and what uh, what the impact it will uh, it will do um, after buying it. So then I uh, just put the, the last slide for the uh, um, uh, what will happen uh, by the uh, different uh, researchers that uh, the survey what was done about the, the luxury, about the apparel design. Uh, so what will happen in different countries after the down, so the post COVID uh, reaction. So the first chart is showing uh, the answer to the question, uh, would you buy from, uh, if you plan some luxury shopping, so would you go for it? So see, uh, like, um, it's not written uh, how many people answered the questions, but I think it's more than 100. So still we have people who are go going for their luxury shopping. Uh, then another chart, uh, the, um, uh, the question was, uh, would you uh, go for the luxury purchase after the COVID-19? So this also, we see the India is uh, still on the top chart. So then uh, for sure it's uh, just a survey, but it's already showing the, the future. So I think I, I uh, want to finish by this. So we are uh, running out of time with, with, our, uh, with our wonderful discussion uh, with uh, Mr. Mohammed from the textile and understand about all design so this is uh, perfect interest thank you sir thank you so much for so informative uh, like huge information and very useful for everyone for sure thank you thank you very much for all the participants and the Vogue institute and maria madam thank you very much thank you so much uh, miss maria and mr nirula uh, thank you let's take up some questions sure. Yeah, so the first question says, it's by Mr. Rashnur. Uh, how important is the color in futuristic innovation in apparel design? From my side, I think it's will be still important because we are, we like colors. Can you explain the term credible to credible, which you mentioned in the PPT? Uh, see, the thing is, I, uh, it's, it's a very big topic everybody knows. So, and how this concept can be applicable from, for fashion, because the problem of fashion, I, I, uh, if every person who touched any sewing machine knows that you can't make the, from the old garment, if the pipe is already weak, you can't make a new garment. So you can make it, you can stitch it, it will last for a long time. From the old sari, which was for a long time, uh, pleated in the wardrobe. Even, uh, there is, uh, it depends on the fabric, but still you can't, uh, the, the fiber is weakening by time, except of the new, <laughs> new fibers not biodegradable. So this is, uh, this is a problem. So how this part, how we can make from uh, old to the new one. So uh, the, the, the basic thing, yes, we can, we can make the small accessories from the old garment, uh, but still we can't make something new from the old because the fiber become uh, the fiber will uh, get in weekend if it's a natural fiber if it's a natural fabric. 
so how it can be applicable to fashion. So uh, the, this is uh, because it will be the explanation for half of an hour. But basically, how from old one make the new and uh, come to the circular and cradle to grave. How from the uh, how we can decompose. So this is uh, the the two main concept of the um, of the sustainability of the recycling. And also, I, I want to tell that we shouldn't uh, mix the two terms. Sustainability is durability. Recycling uh, is, is different. So next question. Okay. Yeah. Any question for Norula? He wanted to leave. OK. Um, so there's no any question. Say thank you very much to all. <laughs> any questions are there? Any doubt? I mean, it will be glad to answer your questions. Then I think you wanted to answer this question: How important is color in futuristic innovation? No, just Maria has explained this uh, color is okay. already. So, so it's it's already already explained it's already. psychologically of color. So it's psychological. We are we are attracted. Okay, so uh, what is the prospect in post-COVID era for handloom textiles? We should give the chance. It's up to us. See, uh, today's trend is more uh, athleisure side. Let's talk practically. Okay, mm -hmm. handloom can produce how much quantity? Handloom can produce very like, like per day they can produce 40 to 50 yards of fabrics. If you have the modern technology, which unconventional technology can produce 400, 800 yards of fabric. And again, can handloom can produce athleisure fabric, which is a big question mark. Yeah, yeah. But athleisure is the one which is going going forward. Like nobody wants to wear the tie and the suit after the office. Only the few people who want to do it can be able to produce the ties and the suits fabric in the handloom, which is not possible. So handloom by the, the weaver will go to view the fabric for whole day, then he will get only 200 rupees, which is not concerning for anybody, which is not sustainable. But we still have the ethnic wear for the functions, right? Yes, in but India, yes. India, yes. yes. No, we say in India, yes, ethnic ways are there. We have to encourage, but where is the government fund for this handloom technology? Completely. And with the handloom, whatever we do, whatever we used to produce, those days we did not have the technology to make the fabric. The similar type of handloom type of fabric can be produced by using this unconventional things. Why can't we uh, go with that? Same handloom type of fabric can be produced in the unconventional machineries, which can be faster and efficient. The ten looms can be looked after by one person. Here, ten hand looms has to look after by 20 people. And the productivity, production, cost, it's all aspects we need to think. We need to be realistic. We, we need to be realistic. That's what I can say. This is one question, uh, one more question related to fabric. Is there any fabric that reacts to the outside temperature? Yes. There are available, technologies are available, yarns are available. Uh, it will, when I was working in a Levi's as an Asia Pacific manager, I went to the uh, Japan and I found that fabric. Still, I must, I must be having the fabric which can change the colors. With the lights because it takes like sunlight has all the colors, same of colors, but it, when you come inside, it looks different. If you go outside, it looks different. But a lot of research is going on on that kind of technology, it's yes, available. Okay, so, uh, okay, rest questions are related to fashion, yes. I think Maria, okay. fashion group. <laughs> So I thank you, uh, our panelists for today, Mr. Mohammad Durula and Mr. Chetan, for joining us and sharing uh, your valuable inputs wherever and whenever required. It was remarkable. I think so many. Definitely great. Thank you so much, sir.
Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for supporting you. <laughs> yes. A lot of support for Miss Maria. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Oh my God. <laughs> this is crazy. Okay, Maria will take up some more questions for you. Sure, sure, sure. I have time, no problem. Yeah. So regarding uh, neon colors, is there any development for fast fastness improvement? Uh, sorry, I can't get, get the, uh, the question. What Re is regarding the neon colors, is there any development for fastness improvement? Uh, I think it's the, the neon colors will will, uh, will be here anyway. So, um, but uh, then uh, we need to understand like where, where we apply, uh, why we apply and what, are, what is the purpose. So then we need also to see the sustainable, sustainable part of the uh, ink used for it. So uh, this, the designer should, should see the impact. So would we uh, prioritize it or not? Uh, there are the things when the neon colors are the must. So the necessity yes. again uh, for the like to be seen from the far basically coming from the road signs uh, from the road sign. So uh, then uh, for sure this is uh, that uh, also it's used a lot for the party wear because of the um, even if you go to a club and etc. Uh, uh, blue light uh, coming popping out. <coughs> then uh, they have that flex print with the neon colors. But it, it will be different here. Because it looks futuristic also. Yeah. So what is the proportion and balance? Dif difference between proportion and balance. Uh, in designing. Yes. This is a very well, I'm asking, I said something very stable, right? When we have that, uh, I don't know, in your government. Uh, so it's stability, right? And uh, proportions, uh, it's according to the human body. Uh, uh, let's say to answer this question, I need to know for the, 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 uh, the application of it. Because okay, the proportions, uh, it's uh, the. There is a good proportion that uh, invented. So uh, then uh, there are different uh, kind of proportions. Then what is the goal for the if we uh, search for the beauty? So there are some. Uh, it's a psychological perception. Some proportions uh, something very huge or the something very small. So it's unbalanced, right? But maybe yeah, correct. So what kind of the effect you want to give Ibits in the, in that panel? Um, I have some for, for the, I'm doing the advertising for the next session. I have some on the next session about exactly, that was uh, that balloon dress, um, that, um, uh, that um, rubber balloons used for the, um, I think everybody saw the guy, uh, the student from uh, a modern college do it when it's blowing and then, coming to the government and he used uh, the rubber from uh, Sri Lanka so he did the research in lab in Sri Lanka for uh, it's a natural rubber still everybody is uh, asking how the models were breathing inside of the balloon this was I think the uh, main part <laughs> main trick of the collection so uh, I prepared it for So will there be, uh, do you think as per your view, a good scope for accessory designer in India? Do you think so? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, guys, I put also in the presentation, if you, uh, if I can go back, I'll see because it's a little bit slow. Uh, see, uh, for example, we have the article in Vogue uh, magazine or Marie Claire, Bollywood stars are um, very in the Indian designers. So, Pay attention, it used to be yes. the one that, that uh, clutch bag, what I put it also from uh, from somewhere from the haute couture. So, for sure.
uh, dressing style should be changed to make it more innovative? See, it won't happen. We don't uh, go uh, out with a new dresser, firstly, because whether we need to stitch ourselves or, uh, or yeah. the stock should be over, right? That's what, uh, what was produced. Uh, so for sure, it will be changed. But see, the apparel production, it's a huge ship, right? To turn it, Correct. it will take time. It can't go immediately. Uh, Okay, it's not the bicycle. Yeah. For sure, it will take years. So uh, as I put in the presentation, we are talking about 2030. So for sure that I, and I hope for the best, you know, I think that all the innovations, if I take the uh, zip, the zipper, it was uh, done after the First World War. So all the innovations coming from the uniform brands. Days from the and during, for example, the wars, first world war, second world war, lots of innovation in medicine, in um, d any design, uh, new fabrics, new like the new things came after some unfortunately the great disaster. So what we are what we are facing now, but I hope that um, this part, uh, what we are living now, made us realize a lot of things. Just to, exactly. you know, we were running somewhere. Be more responsible, relax, analyze before doing anything. This is the thing, and especially for the fashion because it can't go like this. It was like a spaceship going somewhere without the conductor. Because that quantity of, because uh, we are in the fashion design, right? They are not, there are, I don't know how many people are here who is not in, in this, fashion design ship, right? Uh, so apparel, textile, whatever. Uh, see about the customers outside. So why they were buying so much? Because it was advertising, because they, they were caught by the, that uh, thing. What, what we were uh, doing, the two collections a year, minimum two collections. So today we have a long, um, long, uh, long collar, that um, long lapel. Uh, tomorrow we will be short rounded. So throw this, this one. I, uh, I like that, to be frank, in India, it's not like in Europe. It's still, I think the situation is much more better, much better than in, uh, in uh, Europe, US. Uh, you see the charts. So uh, I, I was really Correct. with a huge, two tiny islands making so much waste from the governments. So the, this is, India is not in a bad situation. And uh, to be frank, I really appreciate that lots of, like the ideas are very innovative in India. When you buy the pristine clothing or you have that um, Kurti Churidas can be adjusted by the tailor, this is the future. This is, it's like, uh, I put also, I had no time to, uh, to discuss this, it's like Lego design or IKEA design, right? You have that uh, parts, you just combine it how you want. Excellent, excellent. I think this is it. Uh, they, they, uh, and then that uh, firstly handmade touch, it will fit to you and uh, this is uh, how it should be. The problem of Europe, US and the Western countries, they are to make the um, fold and stitch uh, the trouser, to shorten the trouser, it's uh, 15 to 20 euros. It makes nearly the price of the common. So the hand labor is too much of the local tailors there. So this is a problem. Otherwise, I think the people will, will, go, will go for it because it's your size, like how many, and also the shift. I found that my mom knows how to stitch. She doesn't have the degree in fashion design at all. She's, uh, she was a teacher. Uh, my grandmother knew how to stitch. My great grandmother was a tailor. So this, <laughs> this is a little bit different story, but still women know how to repair by themselves. It's told they are in the US, France, uh, like uh, UK, the, the countries where I live, so I know, they don't know how to put the thread into the needle. They are not taught in oh. So for every home, it's a uh, waste bin. What can be uh, easily repaired, it's, it's, it's we, we don't know this. <laughs> Fortunately, we don't know, not because I think we are from the fashion design, um, 
apparel industry and etc. No, because it's normal. It's just normal skills. How you know how to cook, you know how to mend the, the whole, right? So the, this is uh, the part we, where I think India is advanced. India is advanced in many things. Uh, so and I think that uh, also that we still have Sure, we were sorry for function. We still have the ethnic garments. Uh, in our Pondicherry, um, the, the, you know, the people, uh, men are very dirty, what they were very for 2000 years. <laughs> so, and, uh, this, this is this is great. This is great. This is we don't, in some parts, we don't need the innovation. Just uh, put your money in something else. Put your money on the uh, top of that uh, pyramid of the self. <laughs> right. It was wonderful, Maria. This was wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, it was wonderful. Session. We are lucky to have you, uh, you know, in every way for Vogue. Webinar is just a medium. <laughs> I think our students have got a fantastic, you know, very informative session today. I would again mention the panelists. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mohammad Nurul and Mr. Chetan. I think that they were. Uh, their support was uh, remarkable. Participants, thank you again for us and supporting us for all the sessions. I'm sure uh, you've got lots to learn today and uh, I think this was an excellent exploration um, with you, with us. Now please join us for the second session on 4th of May with Maria again. Uh, we will discuss the creative approach to new fashion. So thank you Maria for today and we are all waiting for the next session. Thank you, thank you for that wonderful opportunity and uh, wonderful support. And I hope uh, that uh, students, professionals, uh, they are more aware. Well, I didn't want to, you know, put my opinion. I just wanted to share what I'm thinking. I'm sure that 99% uh, people were thinking about it because you, you are just here. You can't think uh, about something else. You know, you have all two months of thinking. So, and I hope to see everybody on the, on the fourth, right? We have the second session. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, I think I lost connection. It was my, it was at my end, is it? Okay, so thank you, Maria. See you uh, day after tomorrow, 4th of June. And uh, sure. thank you for the Hope to see you all. Yeah, for the next session. Okay, have a nice thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.